what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology and today we will continue with our bhagavad gita series if you're new to the channel then please subscribe to it below because now we will discuss about the six kinds of aggressors and if you like this video then click the thumbs up at the end and share this video with those people who want to understand what Lord Krishna is telling to everybody in the Bhagavad Gita. And before I say, I always begin by saying, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. Even when there are six aggressors, you will still find him. All right. So we discussed about the first 35 verses from the first chapter. And now we will start from the 36th verse. And we will begin with the invocation to our preceptors om agyan timirandhasya gyananjana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasmai shri guruve namaha now what did we discuss till now arjuna said to lord krishna that i can't fight and i should not fight these people are bad i know but ultimately they are my relatives so what's the use of fighting them if they don't live at all after the battle right what will i gain by killing everybody what's the use of sitting in the throne if nobody's there and why is he uh, getting this kind of doubts or why is he undergoing these kind of weaknesses because he's attached yes here basically arjuna is displaying the attachment of a conditioned living entity all right in that Arjuna is describing us what is our situation when we are attached to things, attached to people especially. <laughs> so our situation is also precarious like the situation of Arjuna here. Alright, so the 36th verse is as follows. Papam eva sred asman hatvetan atatina tasman naraha vayam hantum dhratrashtran sabandhavan Swajanam hi katham hatva sukhina shyama madhava. Alright, so the translation is Sin will overcome us if we slay such aggressors. Therefore, it is not proper for us to kill the sons of Dhritarashtra and our friends. What should we gain, O Krishna, <laughs> husband of the goddess of fortune? He's referring to Lord Krishna here. And how could we be happy by killing our own kingsmen? So Arjuna is giving repeatedly arguments of different nature. And he's trying to prove that what he thinks about his so-called apparent fake renunciation of not killing them is proper as per the moral courts. He's telling that there will be sin if we kill these people. Therefore, it is not good to kill the sons of Dhritarashtra and our friends. And he's asking, what will you gain ultimately? So the same thing he's speaking again and again. That's what happens when you are attached to something. The same th story you keep telling yourself again and again. Okay, maybe uh, this thing will not happen. Maybe that will come back. This will come back. He will come back. She will come back. Same story. The same arguments he's giving again and again. Do you notice? Now comes the purport. According to Vedic injunctions, there are six kinds of aggressors. Number one, a poison giver. Number two, one who sets fire to the house. My God. Number three, one who attacks with deadly weapons. Number four, one who plunders riches. Number five, one who occupies another's land. And number six, one who kidnaps a wife. This is applicable to husband also, I think. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> these are six kind of aggressors. Aggressors means one who display aggression. And what aggression is? Aggression basically is another way to tell somebody that I want what you have and I will take it. Alright, I will not give 
that to you that's mine even if that is yours i will still snatch it from you or trying to prove others that i'm a very great personality by using devious means anger aggression is like the higher version of anger it's like the expression of the anger it's like you are blasting things you are you're ripping apart people and then later on you are lamenting why did i do so all right whenever anybody acts on anger you understand that the person is a victim of aggression so now there are six kind of aggressors here so first is one who gives poison then one who sets house to fire then one who attacks with deadly weapons and then one who plunders your riches and one who occupies another's land and one who kidnaps the wife or husband such aggressors are at once to be killed and no sin is incurred by killing such aggressors there you see so there it is mentioned that if anybody has done any of these six things to you and if you go and kill them you do not get sin all right such killing of aggressors is quite befitting an any ordinary man but arjuna was not an ordinary person he was saintly by character there you see and therefore he wanted to deal with them in saintliness so arjuna was a very great personality he was very caring and he was very loving and he was very humble and he was like a saint even yudhishthir maharaj his elder brother is like a rajarishi he is like a royal sage raja is king and rishi is a sage so these people although they were externally chatriyas but internally they were greatly elevated personalities so and so that lord krishna would directly uh, personally roam with them and lord krishna would go and touch the feet of yudhishthir maharaj every morning and he would say please bless me <laughs> god is taking your blessings so imagine how uh, elevated you are that's a contradiction but anyways of course that, that doesn't mean that yudhishthir maharaj is higher than lord krishna lord krishna is god himself but lord krishna is demonstrating that you are my elder and you are also such a great personality all right so not only arjuna all the pandavas they were extraordinary personalities so it's written here such killing of aggressors is quite befitting an any ordinary man so basically what is mentioned here is that if it would be any other person and there would be these six kind of aggressions towards that person they would directly go and kill the person suppose somebody kidnaps your wife what you will do you will go and kill the person right kill means you will if you find then you will go and give the name to the police all these things you will be trying to do but arjuna is not a ordinary personality here he is a very uh, saintly person so that is why he is telling that i don't want to do all this because he has a lot of compassion in his heart lots of compassion and for him to do things like a ordinary person to take revenge bloody revenge is very difficult all right and therefore he wanted to deal with them in a good manner in a saintly manner yes as in hindi they say na lato ke bhoot baato se nahi mante <laughs> but arjuna was still trying can we still have some other way out except this bloody battle now this kind of saintliness however is not for a chatriya that means chatriyas are supposed to fight when there is demand all right just because you are a saintly person it doesn't mean you should behave like that all right that's what is written here this kind of saintliness however is not for a chatriya because if the chatriya the king the people who are in charge of protection basically if they behave like this uh, then there will be a lot of mishap in the society right brahmana should be like this but not that chatriyas Although a responsible man in the administration of of a state is required to be saintly, although he is required to be saintly, but he should not be cowardly. <laughs> so there is a difference, you see. Saintliness and cowardliness is not the same. It's very different. Saintliness basically means you voluntarily you forgive the person. All right. Cowardliness means you know you cannot do any harm to the person, so you go and accept defeat. 
saintliness is the opposite actually even when you can punish you don't punish that's what saintliness is but he should not be cowardly cowardly means basically running away from responsibilities now what is the responsibility of a satriya to ensure that there is proper order in the state all right otherwise there will be complete mayhem in the society for example now comes the example of lord ram lord ram was so saintly that people even now are anxious to live in the kingdom of lord ram which is known as ram rajya there you go ram rajya is here but lord ram never showed any cowardice ravana was an aggressor against ram because ravan kidnapped ram's wife sita but lord ram gave him sufficient lessons unparalleled in the history of the world my god how beautiful this is so lord ram extinguished he wiped off the entire dynasty of ravana except vibhishan of course and that to vibhishan was saved because he was on the side of lord ram whoever was on the opposite side of lord ram they were vanished completely extinguished even demons like meghnath indrajit and ravana's brother kumkaran khar dushan ahiravan mahiravan everybody was extinguished meghnath was his eldest son he was a extraordinary warrior but lakshman killed him at the end so lord ram gave him sufficient lessons unparalleled in the history of the world that means nobody has ever punished the enemy like lord ram has punished and who is the enemy ravan himself in arjuna's case however one should consider the special type of aggressors namely his own grandfather own teacher friends sons grandsons etc because of them arjuna thought that he should not take the severe steps necessary against ordinary aggressors all right so arjuna was feeling these are not ordinary people they are my very intimate relatives and very close associates so it does not befit me to behave behave with them as i would have behaved with another ordinary person all right so that's what arjuna is thinking here because of them arjuna thought that he should not take the severe steps necessary against ordinary aggressors besides that saintly persons are advised to forgive such injunctions for saintly persons are more important than any political emergency that's what i said earlier brahmanas the priests the priestly order is supposed to behave like arjuna they are supposed to forgive but kshatriyas are not supposed to behave like that because they are the rulers they cannot behave like this arjuna considered that rather than killing his own kingsmen for political reasons it would be better to forgive them on grounds of religion and saintly behavior so now arjuna is thinking instead of killing them okay let me behave like a saint let me behave in a very good way and let me forgive he did not therefore consider such killing profitable simply for the matter of temporary bodily happiness i will repeat this statement it's a very important statement he did not therefore consider such killing profitable profitable simply for the matter of temporary bodily happiness so he is thinking just to sit in the throne basically what winning a war is some bodily happiness right nothing more than that you get wealth and you get a nice place to sleep maybe you have nice some nice people around you that's all that's all is bodily happiness so he's telling it is not worth that i kill all these personalities but just for some bodily happiness and that too which is temporary because janm mrityu jara vyadi dukha dosha anudarshanam janm mrityu jara vyadi janm is birth mrityu is death jara is disease vyadi birth old age disease and death so these four things are there janm mrityu jara vyadi these are the four sources of misery all right so when these 
sources of misery come upon us we suffer very badly now why birth because at the time when a baby is born the baby is always crying you will never see a laughing baby because he is suffering because he is pushed through that uh, his mother's body then that path is a very narrow path and he is pushed out of it that's terrible actually and he is crying all the time that is why you will see babies when they come out now they will always be crying non-stop He did not therefore consider such killing profitable simply for the matter of temporary bodily happiness. So bodily happiness is temporary. Today you have, suppose you have a very beautiful partner, but tomorrow the person may not be there. Yes, and definitely the person will perish one day. So that's temporary. You may feel, oh, but he will be there with me for 50 years. Now she will be there with me for the next 40 years. That is okay. That's because you are thinking like a frog. Do you know the story of the frog? No. I will tell you after this purple. <laughs> now, after all, kingdoms and the pleasures derived therefrom are not permanent. So, why should we risk his life and salvation by killing his own kingsmen? So, Arjuna is thinking, anyways, these temporary things which I will be getting means... I'll be ruling. I'll be as powerful as the king because Yudhishthira will be the king, of course. But he will also be like almost as powerful as Yudhishthira. But that's going to be there with him only till he lives in this planet, right? After that, it is not going to be there with him. And he's thinking that. Why should he risk his life and eternal salvation? So, salvation is basically mukti. When you go back to the spiritual world, and you stay with God. But for that your karma has to be nullified. So Arjuna is thinking here. Oh why should I create bad karma again? <laughs> Otherwise uh, I have to again take birth. Just for this kingdom. No 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 no. I don't want to do that. Alright. Now Arjuna is telling. Arjuna's address of Krishna as Madhava. Because in the purport if you see. Last three words were. Sukhina Shyama Madhava. Alright. So whenever you see words like this, Arjuna's addressing of Krishna as Madhava. So you should go back to the purport and check. Where has Arjuna referred to Lord Krishna as Madhava? Why has he not referred to him as Govinda? Why not as Narayan or as Hari? In the earlier verses we saw, Arjuna had referred to Lord Krishna as Govinda. That was because, as I said in that video, that lord krishna is name his name is govinda because he is the controller of the senses all right and arjuna wanted lord krishna to understand exactly what he was going through by indicating to him that oh you anyways know everything because you are controlling my eyes ears nose skin but now he is referring to him as madhava so let's see why he is referring to him as madhava Arjuna's addressing of Krishna as Madhava or now what is the meaning of the word Madhav? Madhav means husband of the goddess of fortune which is Lakshmi Devi herself. Arjuna's addressing of Krishna as Madhava or the husband of the goddess of fortune is also significant in this connection. That means he has not just taken an arbitrary name of Lord Krishna and he has just put it oh maybe this sounds good. No, 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 no. He has very carefully calculative after calculating he has uh, after analyzing he has put the word madhava he wanted to point out to krishna that as the husband of the goddess of fortune he should not induce arjuna to take up a matter which would ultimately bring his misfortune fortune basically is what fortune is anything good that happens to you right and what's the best form of fortune you are with god ultimately that is the highest level of fortune so arjuna is telling that my mission to go and reach god ultimately will be hindered if i kill all these people all right so that's very dangerous that will cause me misfortune so you are the husband of the goddess of fortune highest level of fortune so please don't create misfortune for me by telling me to kill all these people because then i will be entangled in karma he should not induce Arjuna 
to take up a matter which would ultimately bring him, him misfortune so he's indirectly hinting krishna that you are the god husband of the goddess of fortune please make me more fortunate don't make me unfortunate all right krishna however never brings misfortune to anyone to say nothing of his devotees all right so lord krishna is never going to bring misfortune if you follow his words that's what is said in the last statement and now regarding the frog i have shared this story in another video in my channel but i will still share it again one day there was a frog he was a <coughs> phd holder from his uh, frog colony <laughs> and he used to live in a well all right and then what happened there was another frog his childhood friend frog frog friend <laughs> he came uh, from the pacific ocean he he went and he saw oh my god there's a big ocean called the pacific ocean and then this uh, frog came to this well and then he met his old friend and then he said oh my god do you know there's a big ocean out there and then this frog who was a phd holder doctor of philosophy he said which ocean man i don't know what is an ocean after all is it like this well <laughs> then this friend said seriously you don't know what is ocean it's much 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 bigger than this well and then he said how much bigger 100 times 1000 times he said it is you cannot count it's billions and trillions of times bigger than this well but then this frog said hey you're just joking how can there be a such a big well which is millions of times bigger than this well all right so that means he because he was a phd holder <laughs> so he was very much caught up with all the things of that place itself so he refused he denied to identify the fact that there can be something so great also like the pacific ocean all right so like that when you tell a materialistic person that if somebody is staying with you now and you are staying with that person happily that person is not going to stay with you for the for eternity all right then they will brand you as the mr negative <laughs> they will say oh you people don't like to see us happy na no, you people want us to be unhappy because they are so much caught up their situation is like uh, the buffalo who is sitting in the gutter itself the buffalo doesn't realize that it's such a dirty place because the buffalo is enjoying there that's what happens when you enjoy you get entangled and you start feeling you are do what you are doing is right all right So that's the story of the frog, and that's what is happening to Arjuna now. He's becoming very much attached, and he's also saintly, and he doesn't want to kill them, and he doesn't want to get entangled in the law of karma. And then we saw about these six aggressors, okay? And it's written in the purport that killing all these six people will never give you sin. All right, that is it from my side. Six aggressors, and in the next videos we will see the arguments. which arjuna gives further all right and after some time we will see what lord krishna says asochyanan vasochastvam pragyavadamscha bhasate gatasu nagatasumscha nanusho chanti panditah natve vaham jatu nasam natvam neme janadipa sayat pramanam kurute lokastad anuvartate yaidam paramam i'll stop <laughs> <laughs> All right if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to the link below and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share this with people who are interested in knowing the bhagavad gita all right great to see you again see you next time wish you good luck bye bye see you